<laughs> Welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio, presented by Celebs.com up here at the Sundance Film Festival. Giovanna, Eliza, Ronan, uh, Gina. Uh, we've got everyone in here. It's, um, it's kind of cool, Eliza. I mean, you had a short here a couple of years ago. Did that really give you the platform from which to make this feature, or was this already in the cards? Yeah. Um... I started writing It Felt Like Love when I got back from Sundance in 2011 and I was so motivated and so kind of empowered by the experience and I felt like I had people behind me for the first time um, and I started writing this script. Did, and the actual title, I mean, Forever's Gonna Start Tonight obviously uh -huh. brings up uh -huh. musical connotation. Uh -huh. um, it Felt Like Love, you know, feels like it feels like love. Is there, was there a musical kind of bridge to it or was it a specific title? Um, well, it's, uh, it felt like love is kind of an anti sort of love story, so the, the title is a little bit ironic, actually, um, as is Forever is going to start tonight. Um, you know, there are sort of characters who are aspiring towards love, whatever that is, and, you know, sort of, uh, sort of uncovering that you know there's a lot of myths around it when you're young and what it really means yeah it seems like it's changed a lot too it seems that now um people are really trying even harder to grow up more quickly mm -hmm. um so for these guys it's probably their reality so is that kind of you know this is your first acting experience right with, with or, first, or first feature, feature film yeah. right um so for you did it feel like it resonated on a personal level at all? Did you find some similarities? Or? In some ways, definitely. I mean, not with the actual events, right. but I think that um, definitely the emotions behind the character and a lot of the situations bring up either things that you've seen other people experience or things that you've experienced. Yeah, totally. When, I mean, for me, it's like guys often tell their guy friends that they've done a lot more than they have. <laughs> um, so it's kind of interesting, the reverse situation where a girl is making these declarations and facing the consequences. For you, did you feel like, um, you know, it was also something fresh and interesting? And did you really feel like you got to play a lot with Eliza? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I don't know, everyone was so amazing and everyone was so, oh my gosh, I don't even know. Everyone's vision was really great, and everyone was very inspiring, and they just let us have fun with it and try different things. And Did any of you know each other before? No. Um, I knew um, a couple of the other boys that were... Yeah. That were at your school as we, well? Or? We have some Brooklyn heartthrobs yeah. in the film. They're not in this interview, but they, they have quite the reputation <laughs> in the borough. Um, speaking of Brooklyn then, I mean, for you, is it... A case where Brooklyn's a source of inspiration, or is it? That it is when I easiest? when I made um, Forever is going to start tonight. Um, sort of re-triggered my affection for all these neighborhoods that I used to spend time in when I was in high school, and you know I'm not I'm not like a Williamsburg hipster. I don't identify with that stuff. You know I don't hang out there. It's you know it's something that evolved as I was growing up. So I don't really see it as being a part of like the city that I know. Yeah. Um. So for me to be able to make films you know, in these areas that you rarely see on screen, I think is, you know, something I have insight, you know, about and want to, you know, basically show, you know, show the landscape of. And, and why, do you, do you deal also, do you work with like a film commission then to help you out and get locations or is it all people you know, places you know, friends yeah, and Yeah, it's all kind of me re retracing my steps yeah. from high school and places that were mysterious or places that I wouldn't go or places, you know, parks that we hung out in. And in, ter in terms of casting, I mean, uh -huh. Ronan really has a couple of credits, you know, behind this film. But the other guys, uh, you know, Giovanna, Gina, uh -huh. um, obviously fresh faces. Uh -huh. Is What's the intention behind that rather than using people you've collaborated with before? Um, well, I really, really love making discoveries, you know, and developing talent. Um, and, you know, I think that they all come to this with other skills, if it's not necessarily acting, you know, skills like Giovanna is an incredible hip hop dancer and she dances with a, you know, she dances in competition with a group from Carol Gardens and her, you know, with her studio. Um, and I was very, you know, interested in those skills and bringing those skills to the film. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I thought that Gina was incredibly captivating at the audition. Um, you know, and she had some short experience and um, I knew, you know, I knew when I sort of saw her footage, I knew that she could carry the film and I knew that she had a lot of, 
you know, that, you know, that without expressing a lot, she, she said a lot. And there was a lot unspoken in her performance. And in terms of like earning their trust and having meetings with them uh-huh. once they're cast, do you sit down with each of them individually or did they all well, just turn up for on For Gina, the process and the discussion happened before she was cast. Um, Gina sort of, you know, was the last girl I had auditioned. I had scared several away beforehand. Um, and uh, she had a lot of reservations about the role. And there was a long ongoing dialogue about how things would be shot and, you know, working to build her trust and confidence, you know, about the material. And cool. And so how did she finally earn that trust? It was, it was quite the process. Um, Why did you put her through those hoops? What, what I, I, we, it was almost Why surprising. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> me, and, me and my mom, who we were kind of like discussing throughout this whole thing, we were kind of surprised that she still wanted to like talk to us after we said no a few times. And Gina read the script. Or, you know, her, at first her mother was like... Yeah, at like, first my mom was like, you can't even read this script. <laughs> this is not... But like, Because of the subject matter. Yeah, but after you read it a few times, your initial, like, wall kind of comes down, and we had a lot of meetings with Liza. She talked a lot about, okay, so you're not actually going to be here when we're filming this. Like, this is how it's going to be shot. This is what we're going to do. Yeah. And I don't know, it helped getting to know Liza before we committed to anything, and we got to know... Everyone else. I showed her all the casting yeah. videos so she could have a full picture of like who everyone was going to be. This is this character, this is this character, these are the location photos. wanted her to be able to see the whole picture. It's almost an exciting, um, <laughs> you know, reverse situation. Because I know. so many people, they like get, get cast or even approach to be cast, the excitement level sweeps them into situations <laughs> that they don't even know really what they're saying yes to. Yeah. So to have this person question at the beginning of their career is probably, you know, kind of a healthy exercise on some level. <laughs> I think so. I mean, I think I, I wouldn't have wanted to cast someone that didn't have boundaries and reservations because, you know. Well, other than Trickster, I think all your films since then have had some sort of element of sexual mischief. Uh-huh. Um, I mean... Where is that coming from? <laughs> Where is that coming from? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm interested in those taboos, and I don't think people really, you know, explore them in film about, you know, in films about women because they are taboo, you yeah. know. And I was interested in showing male nudity because that was, you know, on a lot of levels taboo, and other things that had to get cut because they were too taboo. Um, but you know, and it's not just. It's not just showing things, but it's also like emotional taboos that around those subjects. Yeah. I mean, Giovanna, I saw you nodding in agreement <laughs> in the background when she was talking about things that had to get cut because they were too taboo. What, did, what was kind of your experience and did you, feel, did you feel comfortable or did you feel uncomfortable with some things? Did you also have that conversation? Um, well, I feel like me and Rowena sort of come from like the same feeling <laughs> about like putting ourselves out there, but she was more than me, but... <laughs> um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, like filming it, cause the script says like they have sex, but <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, my mom first saw it and she was like, what is that? And I was just, like, it's not real. Don't worry. We had a talk and I was like, I swear I'm not a pornographer. She was, like, <laughs> she she was laughing. Like they understood, you know, that it was a movie. But like we, the, me and Jesse, cause since he was the person who was in it with me. We got we knew each other like we filmed other scenes before that they they we filmed that scene last yeah it was one of the last which was good because we got to know each other better so it wasn't as awkward or as weird so it was wasn't that bad it was funny when when we were going to shoot that 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 scene um we were in the van and I could see Giovanna texting and I was like sort of looking over (laughs) her shoulder to see what she was texting she was like I really don't want to do this and I was like oh no I'm like dragging her to do something she doesn't want to do I'm petrified I don't know what I'm doing so it, it elevated my um, anxiety, but and then I just saw her type. It's gonna be awkward, and I was like, oh, she's she can handle awkward. <laughs> Awkward's okay. Yeah. How about for you? Where did it rank on levels from like awkward to to cool? Well, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say it was it was so much awkward or cool. I, I'd say that I understood that it had to be done for the film, and. Uh, Right away, that was one of the first things she asked me when we auditioned. And I was like, let's do it. I mean, it's your, it's your vision, it's your film. Let's do it. I mean, I understand where she's coming with it from. It's not just to show a body part. Right. Like she says, the emotions behind it, too. And 
also, like she said, it's something that not a lot of filmmakers really put in their films because they're scared or something. Yeah. And I think it was really necessary and it's a risk that was worth taking. And I was 300% for it. And uh, she kept asking me, she's like, are you sure, are you sure? I was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. I mean, it's for the film, let's, why not, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and possibly the reason why people are interested in, in the movie is because it has that unique perspective that it, it's not coming from a place of fear, it's coming from yeah, a place of, of, of interest and conversation and curiosity. Um, but uh, certainly, perhaps from you, you just seem unassuming. So I don't know if you probably get away with more than you should or less. <laughs> what, what would you say? What would you say? Did she get away with more than she? Um, I mean, maybe a little bit. My mom is always just like, "Oh, she's so cute. Like, <laughs> we should go meet with her again. Like, she's so sweet." And she, I don't know. She knows what she's doing. It's <laughs> very cool. Well, uh, we appreciate you guys taking a few minutes to come in and have a chat with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.